And welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. A week four is in the books. And wow, Josh, you were really. I, listen, we do. Played... It's too bad I didn't start recording yet. It's really, <laughs> it stinks. We, uh, we you know, we, we had, <laughs> I, I played Hang On Sloopy uh, last week. Sean, and, and look what happened. Right. Um, and then Sean's been having a little bit of a rough week with his fighting Irish. So I figured we'd get the marching band in there, pump up his spirits as he's getting ready to do uh, the Suburban League recap. Before, or after, I should say, Ed. Yeah, all right. Let's send it over to Ed Dick, who will cover the national division in the Suburban League. Ed, take it away. All right, our first game, we're to start out in Wadsworth. The undefeated Stowe Monroe Falls Bulldogs travel to Art Wright Stadium to take on the 1-2 and two Wadsworth Grizzlies in a Suburban League national division opener. The Bulldogs, they left no doubt in this one. They completely dominated the Grizzlies, 38-14. to 14. Yikes. Senior, quarter, senior quarterback Kyle Van Treese hit the Grizzlies D for 272 yards and three touchdowns. And a sky the, score. I don't know. I'm sorry. That's in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> the first half. Yeah. Van Treese connected with Joe Andresi for touchdowns of 20 and nine yards, bookending a 10-yard touchdown run by Terry and Ray, en route to a 21 to nothing first quarter lead. Van Treese spread the love in the second quarter with a 13-yard touchdown pass to Logan Lindsay followed by a 29-yard field goal by Gavin Costello to trigger the running clock. Wadsworth did get a couple of late touchdowns from Jake Justice's 8-yard and Drew Blankenship's 17-yard receptions from backup quarterback Tyler Cottle. The Bulldogs, Andresi, Joe Andresi finished with six receptions for 112 yards and two touchdowns. He is a Player of the Week candidate. Logan Lindsay, five catches, 90 yards and a touchdown for the Bulldogs. For Stowe, Nathaniel Davis had 19 rushes for 84 yards, and quarterback Joey Bachman had 13 carries for 44 yards. Stowe improves to 4-0 overall, 1-0 in the conference. They will host Macedonia Nordonia. Wadsworth is searching for answers. They are dropping to 1-3. They dropped to 1-3 overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will attempt to get back in the win column, hosting Cuyahoga Falls. One highly anticipated matchup involved offensive juggernaut 2 and 1 Macedonia Nordonia hosting the stout defense of 2 and 1 Hudson in their Suburban League National Division opener. The defenses for both teams rolled in the first half. Nordonia Knights quarterback Robbie Levick connected with Ty Evans for a 45 yard touchdown pass and a 7 0 lead. Just before the end of the half, Hudson Explorer quarterback Jackson Parker takes it in from 6 yards out on, on a touchdown plunge to tie the game at 7. In the second half, it was all Explorers and it was all defense. The Explorers defense, uh, Alex Beck picks off a pass by Levick, returns it 27 yards for a touchdown. On the ensuing kickoff, Hudson's Jacob Hall recovers a fumble, leading to uh, two plays later, Kevin Callahan rushing for a 21-yard touchdown, completely stunning Nordonia. Within a span of just over a minute, Hudson turned a 7-7 game into a 27, or I'm sorry, 21-7 lead. Hudson got two more scores in the fourth quarter, a 46-yard touchdown run by Dawson Rory, a 32-yard touchdown pass from Colt Pally to Greg Maley to account for the final 34-7. Hudson's defense was tremendous. They forced three turnovers, they scored a touchdown, and held the very potent Nordonia offense to just 262 yards of total offense. Hudson is now 3-1 overall, 1-0 in the conference. They will host North Royalton next week. It doesn't get, it doesn't get any easier for Nordonia. They fall to 2-2 two two overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will travel to undefeated Stowe. Undefeated Brooksville Broadview Heights traveled to 1-2 and two Cuyahoga Falls in their Suburban League National Division opener. The Bees wasted no time in establishing dominance. Quarterback Luke Sternad found running back Joni McGonigal for an 11-yard touchdown pass. Sternad then found wide receiver Sam Wigloos for a 32-yard score to go up 13-0 after one. Sternad threw his third touchdown pass, a 3-yard touchdown to Victor Bierman, and Alec Buckley ran for two more scores as the Bees routed the, tiger, the Black Tigers 41-7. to the Bees improved a 4-0 overall, 1-0 in the conference. They will host Twinsburg next week. The Black Tigers fall to 1-3 overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will travel to Wadsworth. My game of the week, 
pitted the Twinsburg Tigers versus the North Royalton Bears. And uh, it took it, it, this game took place at North Royalton's Serpentini Chevrolet Stadium. Uh, both teams came into the game with records of one and two, looking to start conference play, conference play undefeated, and they did not disappoint in this contest. Twinsburg started the scoring late in the first quarter as sophomore quarterback Adam Vandemotter found wide receiver Trey Radford for a 14-yard touchdown pass, giving the Tigers a 7-0 lead. Undaunted, North Royalton's Eddie Fister and his kickoff return team proceeded to house the ensuing kickoff, a 94-yard score. After the extra, extra point by James Osborne, this game was tied at 7 going into the second quarter. Twinsburg struck again early in the second quarter. Christian Edgerson took a handoff 50 yards to give the Tigers their next lead. Casey McCarthy's extra point was good, and the Tigers had a 14-7 lead. On the next drive, North Wilson freshman quarterback, a freshman playing Division I, he has big, big props here for Joe Marusic, connected on an 84-yard touchdown pass. Dominic Palco connects on the extra point. The game is tied at 14, where it stayed that way for the rest of the first half. Twinsburg got the ball to start the second half, and the explosive Edgerson scorched the Bears on a 48-yard touchdown run, his second of the day. McCarthy's extra point was good, and just like that, the Tigers had a 21-14 lead. The Bears could not match the score. Christian Edgerson scored his third touchdown of the game, this coming by way of a 21-yard touchdown pass from Adam Vandemotter to give the Tigers a 28-14 lead in the third quarter. North Royalton uses a little trickery as Tyler uh, Nurick hits Adam Barrett for a 44-yard touchdown pass, bringing the Bears back to a 28-21 deficit. The Bears got the ball back, and then late in the third quarter, Dominic Car uh, Cario punched through the Tigers' defense for a 9-yard touchdown run. However, the extra point was no good, leaving the Bears behind 28-27 and ultimately costing the Bears the game as the defense for both teams held stout in the fourth quarter. The final score, Twinsburg Tigers 28, North Worlds and Bears 27. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice spotlight game, Ed. Man, ooh, ooh. good on me for picking this one, right? by the way. Man, Twinsburg quarterback Adam Vandemotter was 10 of 19 passing for 183 yards and two touchdowns. Christian Edgerson, he, this guy is very efficient. He had three carries, but made him count for 106 yards and two touchdowns. He caught two passes for 42 yards and a touchdown. Trey Radford had five catches for 59 yards and a score. Defensively, James Grammons had five tackles once in one sack, and Jared Eaton had an interception for the Tigers. North Royalton had scores from four different players. Two touchdown passes by Joe Marusic and uh, Tyler Nurick, while Dominic Carrero... Had a rushing touchdown, and Eddie Fister scored on special teams with his kick kickoff return for a touchdown. Twinsburg moves to 2-2 two two overall, 1-0 and oh in the conference. They will travel to Brexville Broadview Heights. North Royalton drops to 1-3 and three overall, 0-1 oh in the conference. They will travel to Hudson. My, uh, my MVP for the week, I just, uh, I just talked about him, and uh, he was – quite efficient he had five total touches leading to 148 yards and three touchdowns total christian edgerson from twinsburg is my mvp for the week of week four and my spotlight game of the week for week five suburban league national division cuyahoga falls will travel to wadsworth uh, that will be my spotlight game of the week sean yes sir all right, starting out in the Suburban League American Division, we're going to start out with Aurora traveling to Kent Roosevelt. Now, this game was close in the first quarter. It was tied 7-7, but uh, after that, Aurora took control both offensively and defensively. Uh, they, the defense pitched a shutout against the Rough Riders in the, for the remaining three quarters, and Aurora's offense was scored at will. Aurora approves a 3-1 and 1-0 and and in the conference, and they will host Barberton, who is 3-1 and one in Week 5. Roosevelt, unfortunately, falls to 0-4, and, and they will host Talmadge in Week 5. Speaking of Talmadge, Talmadge played a non-conference game traveling to New Philadelphia after an impressive win against Garfield last week. They look to continue their winning ways. Unfortunately, New Philadelphia had other plans, holding the Blue Devils to just 10 points while putting up 31 of their own. Talmadge falls to 2-2 two two on the season, but they open conference play at Kent Roosevelt and look to get back on track. 
My next game is Copley at Barberton. This was our game of the week, but suffice it to say, this was probably the actual game of the week. Very close game with Copley edging Barberton late in the fourth quarter, 27 to 26. Next, we move to my spotlight game, and that spotlight game had Revere traveling to Highland. And this game was not much of a game at all. Highland's defense was on a mission, and that mission was to stop Clayton Langdon, who had racked up 695 yards to date coming into this game. The Highlands defense held the Minutemen offense to just 73 total yards for the game. Jesus. Hornets only allowed one first down all night. Jake Maul blocked a 43-yard field goal. Jake Rogers returned a punt for 69 yards and a touchdown. Ethan Girding returned a fumble for 17 yards and a touchdown. John DiPaolo picked off a pass and, and returned it on setting up a Highland score. Highland's offense, not to be outdone, had no trouble putting up points against Revere's defense. Led by Chris Burnside, who had 14 carries, 76 yards, and two touchdowns. Evan Castellanos, who added two touchdowns. And quarterback Matthew Ernest, who carried the ball seven times for 50 yards and added a touchdown just for good measure. Revere falls to 3-1 and and 0-1 and, and will look to right the ship in Week 5 when they travel to Copley. And Highland will host St. Charles in a non-conference Week 5 matchup, but they improved to 3-1. and one. Guys, when I look at this spotlight game, I was struck by how Coach Gibbons had the Highland Hornets ready for, for the Revere offense. And as I said, coming into this game, the offense went as Clayton Langdon did. And unfortunately, Highland knew that. And they and when, in, the, in a well-written article in the Medina Gazette, Coach Gibbons stated that the mission was to build a wall that Clayton Langdon couldn't run through. And boy, did they do that. I mean, when you hold a team to 73 yards total for the entire game, only giving up one first down. I've never even heard of only giving up one first that's down. That's what I'm I mean, saying. That's impressive. Yeah. So, in inspired of that, I'm going to go a little off kilter, and I'm going to give the Highland defensive unit nice. a man, my MVP of the week. You don't. That's like a, that. that's a dominating performance. The offense did what it did. They've been putting up points all season, but that is a fantastic defensive output by Highland. Um, and my Week Five spotlight game, I'm going to go ahead and say Barberton at Aurora. This is a big game. Mm-hmm. Barberton coming off a really tough loss. Aurora looking to establish itself. Again, in the in the American division, so this should be a definitely a good game. Yeah, I'm I'm really impressed, especially you know looking at the way Highland was able to come out and just really, I mean, just dominate that entire game from start to finish. It, it wasn't even close. And you know, Highland's a team that got I think is getting better as the weeks go on, and that's a scary thing for people in the American division because when they played Brunswick, you know, there was that I think Ed who was there and we were all there covering that game. Contest. That was a sloppy, sloppy game on both sides. A lot of penalties, a lot of uh, a couple of turnovers. You know, n- some miscommunications on both sides, and you know, it was really you know, Brunswick was able to pull that one out. And I think that's stuck in the craw of Highland going forward. And I think, you know, obviously the, the teams to beat in in the American Division, at least I think, are Aurora, right now Copley and and Highland, and they're all you know set to play each other here in the next in the last ha- later half of the season. Unfortunately, Barberton took a tough loss. And, you know, we'll have to have some help um, in order to maybe pull out a division win. But they're still very much alive in the playoff picture. Um, but, unfortunately, you want to win that division and you want to avenge some of the losses. But, uh, Ed, I'm, I was very interested to see the, the the score of your spotlight game. I mean, that was a really good pick by you. You know, those two teams aren't necessarily the powers in your particular division. But, nevertheless, a very good game. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Credit to those guys for making me sound, making me look good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, you looked at the rest of the. It you was. Know, I think the obvious choice would have been Nordonia and Hudson. Mm-hmm. Um, then that that ended up being one of the one of the more lopsided games in the. Uh, surprisingly, in this league for this week, I didn't see that coming at all. I mean, Nordonia has been, you know, a buzzsaw lately, uh, offensively, and this is one of those, um, you know, the irresistible force meets the immovable object mm-hmm. and uh Hudson's defense was able to get some you know able to get some turnovers they got a defensive score got a, a turnover in special teams and you know North Junior got themselves in quicksand real quick uh, you know in, in in a bad way and they just weren't able to come back out of it um so i think right now a, a lot of a lot of thing a lot of um i think we're going to be pointing towards Hudson and Stowe yeah. in week 7 that's going to be a major battle and and actually you know, Brexham Broadview Heights, you can't sleep on those guys. They're no. 4-0, and and they're 1-0 in, in conference play. Um, they, they're going to take on Twinsburg next week, and then they got Nordonia in week six uh, before they finish with Stowe and Hudson in week nine and week ten. Wow. 
So, I mean, they'll, they'll have a little, uh, some opportunities here to yeah. build up some points. And it was really the reason why their season got derailed last year is because quarterback Luke Sternad got hurt. Yeah. And it provided – I mean, Sternad is, is the player that makes that team go. He is the, he's the leader. He is essentially another coach on the field when he's playing. Um, and, and if you have Luke Sternad on your team, you have a pretty good chance to win. Yeah. Or at least you give yourself a, you know, a fighter's chance of winning. Well, I mean – yeah, you're right. When you look at that schedule, you know, having those two teams, you really kind of set up your, you know, make your own destiny. Hey, you can, you know, the coach uh, of Rexville Broadview Heights can say, hey, guys, we take care of business and our last two games are going to de- determine who wins this division. I mean, and, you yep. know, those are no, you know, to have Stowe and then follow it up with Hudson, both really good defenses and really good offenses, just really good teams overall. You know, you have an opportunity to make some noise in the, in the national division. Um, and I think, you know, the same thing could be said for the American division. Absolutely. I, you know what I mean? I think. You know, Highland is, is, is my X factor in here. You know, Revere, unfortunately, took a bad loss, and you wonder how that team's going to recover, um, you, you know, significantly there. I, I look for Aurora and Copley to really kind of be the, the two teams at this point, just given where Barberton at. Barberton's going to need a lot of help. Barberton's going to need a team that they've beaten in conference to beat uh, Copley, and they got to take care of business against Aurora and Highland, and they got to be able to, you know, finish the thing. But they're still very much in the mix. I just don't – I think right now the ones who control their destiny right now are Aurora, Copley, and really Highland is your probably your dark horse, maybe your X factor. They could come in and, and shock the world. With the way their defense is playing and the way their, their offense is clicking, and it really is impressive to see how they were able to bounce back from that week one loss at Brunswick and, and really take care of business throughout the process. And beating a pretty good Canada prep team – who, I mean, they had six guys in week two. I mean, they played them week two. They beat them, edged them out. But they had six guys that were going D1. So it's not like that was a some, you know slacker team that they played. They played a tough team. Um, I think the Revere loss kind of maybe set the ship for them going forward and said, hey, guys, it's not going to be easy. Um, but, again, Aurora is back to their winning ways. Copley with a big, big win. And we'll talk about that in our Game of the Week segment because a lot of that – game i think was the resolve of that team and 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 the coach and and the star player actually definitely did say say that going forward so it's been very very interesting uh well and i wouldn't count out barberton either actually i I, I mean because them and copley are are actually still tied i think three and one three yeah but they're but they're oh and one and barberton has a loss in conference yeah they're gonna need copley to lose to a team they beat and they're gonna need beat aurora if you know what yeah, I mean, I mean gonna, there's still to, a lot of games left. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm but, saying it's, uh, you know, you like to be able to control your own destiny in the division. And right now, Barberton needs help from other teams to get really in the in the you know. Well, in the way the way this conference is, I mean, you could say the same thing in the Suburban League. Although I think there is one team that's head and shoulders above the rest. Um, th- these conferences, these teams beat on each other. Yeah, and you, it's never it's really mo- no more evident than the Southwestern Conference. I think. They they pretty much eat their own there. They have to because they play nine yeah. games against each other. Uh, in, in your conference there, or in your division there, Sean, you you, you do have four teams that could conceivably yeah. win the conference or even tie yeah. for a ch- for a championship in the conference because there the competition is so tight there between Copley, Aurora, and Barberton. Um, and you, you know Highlands knocking on the door. Revere starting out hot. We'll see if they can maintain the, the momentum after this hiccup they had against Highland. You know, so it, it is very – you're right in that, you know, Barberton absolutely needs some help, but it's so early in the season that yeah. I, oh, it, no. I think it's um, – you know, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for, yeah. you know, for, for a lot of things that happen in this division. Yeah, that's true. And when we get into the game of the week, we'll we'll discuss Barberton and, and kind of how that game played out for them and, and, and what, you know, what Rob and I saw uh, going forward at that at that game. Yes, it it was a a pretty crazy game, but what we're going to do right now is step away. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to give you uh, a recap a week for our game of the week, which was Copley and Barberton, and also look ahead to this Friday night and tell you where exactly we're going to be because it's going to be uh, a fun one. And I think so far we've, we've been pretty successful picking our uh, games of the week. Ed with his spotlight game of the week. You know, I think all of us somewhat are close. We're somewhere in the vicinity of a good game. It's usually tough. All right, we're sports on tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. Week four recap is over. We'll look ahead. Coming up, sports on tap are the NEO Sports Insiders Network. Thanks for listening. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 